All right, fighters, today I want to introduce you to my good buddy, Aaron Harshaw. We have so much in common. One of the things being he served many years in the ministry, as did I, you know, just as a starting point. He's a GC uh, in, a, in a little town in Kansas doing some great things. He is a, and this is his words, he says, I am literally uh, in, in the questionnaire to set up this interview. He says, I'm literally the poster child for what the contractor fight produces when followed. And uh, everything I know and I'm implementing is basically the result of the fight. He started his business in 2018, September 1st, 2018. We talk about that a little bit and he's entering his fourth year and he's about to hit the million dollar mark. And we talk about some of the lessons learned. We actually talked a lot about uh, what it really means to love your team and have their backs and guide them and mentor them, which is, uh, I told him at the end. I have no doubt that he is going to continue to grow an amazing company that serves many people for many years simply because of the way he shows up and treats his team. So don't miss this interview, you guys. Aaron is one heck of a dude, and I'm grateful that uh, he took the time to share uh, some of his story here with us today. You guys rock, and here's Aaron. Aaron, welcome to the fight. How you doing, buddy? Hey, Tom, I'm doing great, man. Thanks for having me on today. All right. So I know we have a lot to talk about today. You started your business be four years ago tomorrow. As of, That's uh, right. And we're recording this on the 31st of August. So September 1st is your four-year anniversary. And you are clo- this year in 2022, you're closing in on a million bucks of revenue and stuff, which is killer because less than 10% of all businesses ever hit a million bucks. You're going to do it in, in four years. Uh, which is awesome. We're we're going to talk about a bunch of stuff, but I want to start with this because I didn't know this, or if I knew this, I I misremembered it. <laughs> <laughs> you were in the ministry, yes. For tell me about that. for twenty five years. All right, because you know yeah. I got fired from a church, so I was like, <laughs> hey, so tell me about that, man. So you you ended up doing that, and then you made the jump into starting a business. Yeah, so I didn't. I didn't actually. Thankfully. I didn't get fired, but what we are both former pastors. Yeah. Uh, I retired in August. Basically, I retired four years ago today okay. and started my business four years ago tomorrow. Yeah. We, well, I was, I was an evangelist for about 10 years, did both evangelism and pastoral ministry for about five. And then the last 10 years, I actually was part of a church plant where we planted a church in this little town that we're in and pastored that church uh, for 10 years. And, and okay. then uh, just turned the page. Grateful for that chapter in my life. Not apologetic at all. Loved mm-hmm. being in the pastorate. Loved people. Loved speaking. Being an encouragement to folks with the word. And yet at the same time, God had a different plan. And this is now his His plan for us. And we're, <laughs> we're just as excited about this chapter as we were the yeah. last one. Well, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, because I I was part of a church planting as well, and actually was on full time. That was the church I was full time staff on, and all that stuff. So, so my question is this: because I've learned a lot of lessons, but this is about you, not about me. I'm curious, what have you brought from the ministry into leading your team, leading your business? What are some of those higher level things? Two things have been a help for me as a business owner versus a overseer of, of, a, of a, you know, a shepherd, right? Under shepherd right. of a church, a pastor of a church. Two things I'm helpful. Number one, being able to hear people's needs mm-hmm. through what they're saying. When we did a lot of counseling, my wife and I counsel couples a lot through the years. Typically when they tell you what their main problem is, the first thing out of their mouth is not true. So you got to listen and dig a little bit deeper because honestly, the things that are really going on that cause them to come to say, hey, my marriage is a wreck, isn't the first, second, or third things to come out of their mouth. So active Mm -hmm. listening was was part of just the dynamic of being a pastor when it came to counseling. That helps on the business side of things, especially with the Shinfu training that that I now know. I think the second thing that, that helps is... I still kind of feel like I'm in the ministry. 
Yeah. In the, and then this is what I mean by that. We are helping people correct areas of their life that they can't or need help with on, on their own. Mm -hmm. And so just the people dynamic of it for me is extremely cathartic. I love meeting people. And I love the fact that, you know, to a, to a client, knock on wood, we, yep. we have personal relationships with every single person that, that we've partnered with, whether it's been a bathroom or a basement mm -hmm. or whatever, you know, we've, we, we just enjoyed developing those friendships. And so for me, having that opportunity to still be in an industry where we can touch people's lives in a way that makes a, a massive change and a difference in their home going forward with the memories they get to create with their family going forward. That's, that's where it's at and to get paid to do it. Uh, that's yeah. phenomenal. Yeah. You know, Mark Bunker for years has referred to me as pastor T and uh, <laughs> here in the fight, which is kind of funny. I don't know if you know this, but every now and then we'll get a message. We'll get an email or a YouTube comment or a DM or something where people accuse me of being a cult leader with the contractor fight. It's kind of funny, but I'm not surprised that, that that's what you said, because I get the sense when I, you know, I, of course I've not never been around your team really or anything, but I see the posts that you do about your team and things like that. You know, you have that one picture where all your hands are in the middle with your fighter bracelets and stuff. Yeah, and I just right. get the sense that you have a really tight crew. Is that the case? That, that is the case. Yeah. And, and then that doesn't come by accident either. We, we, we push hard for that tight fabric so that mm -hmm. everybody feels like if the fabric gets ripped, everybody gets, everybody gets ripped in the sense that it, it's up to all of us to, to keep that woven together. Nobody's yeah. on the fringes. Everybody's a part mm -hmm. of making sure we all have different roles, obviously, yeah. but nobody, nobody feels like they're the one off. Or not important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, talking about, you know, our code of conduct, which is what that stands for. And, yep. uh, you know, just, just the, the three non-negotiables. We talk about that every Monday morning from 7 to 8.30 in our team meeting. And that has been a change that occurred even in 2022. We didn't even mm -hmm. have those weekly team meetings before you know, before this year. And it's been a, a definite strengthening component for the culture that we want to continue to build in our, in our company. So you brought up these weekly team meetings. How difficult was that for you to implement? I'm going to say not hard for me to implement. I, I realized that as a business owner, I'm setting aside pr production hours and I'm going to have to swallow that cost. But for me, I had a bigger picture of what I wanted those things to be. Mm -hmm. And and it wasn't difficult for me. There are a couple of podcasts that you've done in the past about what your weekly team meetings need to include. So I listened to that. I tried to try to make sure that we had a template in place, that it was guided and directed. And if you don't mind me giving a shout out to a mutual friend of sure. ours, Sonny Panero, yeah. Sonny encouraged me directly or indirectly rather to start your team meetings with a with a personal couple of questions over the last 7 days what's been your personal best and the company best those those two questions so that they can talk about something that's going on in their life and then also something that they were involved in over the past 7 days that's been something they're proud of and so when we're digging into those weeds i get to know my guys better i get to know what makes them tick and, you know, I find out things about their family, what's going on in their home, if they've got repairs going on in their own uh, house and they've got to take care of maybe a toilet backed up or, you know, maybe there's some tension going on, you know, that on a, at a later time I can come up and say, hey, man, how are things going? So for me, team, team meetings on Monday have been more about just talking about what's going to be happening the rest of the week. Mm -hmm. it's, sign it's significant in building, you know, the word culture gets thrown out a lot, almost like a buzzword, but the, the, the inner relational dynamic of people, when they work together, they don't love what they do. If, if it doesn't feel like they're contributing, mm -hmm. then all they're doing is collecting a paycheck and 
they can do that somewhere else and probably will for a dollar more an hour. Yeah. Most, uh, well, most companies don't have meetings. And when, when they do, they usually, they don't have a good foundation of those relationships where when you, so I'll just, I'll back up. So many years ago, when we would do our team meetings and stuff, the purpose of our meetings, depending on the meeting, but it generally was like, I'll just take our operations meeting. All our crew leaders were there. The owners were there. Sales guys were there, office manager, you know, whatever. And it was a time of, you know, all right, Joe, how'd you do on the last job? Report on your hours and report on your upsells. And it was all very, you know, business-like accountability, just get everyone on the same page. But the foundation that we had created, and I, I got to give credit to my, my former business partner, Bruce, on this. Bruce did a phenomenal job of building community with, with our team. And that was one of the things that I learned from him or, or began to learn from him through the years, right? And I've just kind of snowballed it. But so we had this like foundation of, hey, we're all in this together. No, nobody's in the doghouse if your job was over budget or anything like that. It was just literally, how can we all get better? And I would just encourage people, like, if you're having meetings, you got to make investments in between the meetings to create that culture that you're talking about, right? Because that way, because I get it, man, you, you bring, you know, we, we'd have four, eight, 10, 12, 15 guys in the room, all on non-billable hours every week. That That adds up. And if you're not pricing your work right and all that other crap, it hurts you it's tough on the finances, but we found it's kind of, I forget, I always butcher the quote who said it, but if I have eight hours to chop a tree down, I spend six sharpening my ax. Yeah. And to me, right. this meeting was sharpening the ax for us, but it was way more effective and efficient and all those other things when we had that, that culture of, we give a shit about you. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and that's what you want as mm-hmm. a business owner. That's what you want. The find, find the right people ensure that they know they are loved, valued, and provided for, and they're loyal. And, and it's not a fake, it's not that fake classic saccharine loyalty, yeah. but genuine, deep relationship. I know you, let's talk if you're having an issue and, and you're safe, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. That, that environment. Yeah. Well, and that starts with you. That starts with you as the leader. And I have no doubt you set that tone. So you brought up the L word, uh, the love word (laughs) that they're feeling loved. And I, that's big on my radar because my opening talk on the second day, a mile high to kick off that day is actually going to be about love and the power of it and how you grow your business. So I'm curious, how do you show your team that you love them? That's easy for me to answer. I, I'm actually surprised that you asked me that question. I had no idea that was coming, but that's that's easy for me to answer. Number one, it starts with a selflessness that's displayed from me to them. Whenever I go to Home Depot or whatever, you know, if, if I'm picking up two by fours or something, I'll always bring back some Red Bulls for everybody on the crew. Just, just those tiny little things, a, a selfless act that, that they know, hey, he's thinking about me, he cares about me. So I think it starts with, with an mm-hmm. attitude of, of selflessness, number one. Number two, I realize the greatest servant on our, in, in our company is me. Mm-hmm. I, have, I have to be the A number one servant because ultimately without my team, the team that comprises, you know, Harshaw Home Renovators, without them, it, there really is, is essentially no company as it exists today. So in a very real sense, I work for them. Yeah, that's They are my right. employees, but, but I, I work to ensure that they are taken care of so that the company mm-hmm. as a whole continues to thrive and prosper. So yeah. it's a servant mindedness. And I want to make sure that I'm setting the example of what that looks like, because I understand that what they see modeled will be more easily replicable for good or bad. Yeah. If, if, if I'm the biggest jerk, then they're going to feel like it's free reign for them to act that way to everybody else as well. I don't know. It's just different. Totally get that. I think where a lot of people miss the mark with leadership is they don't have empathy towards what their people are going through on a daily basis. You know, whether it's, they're out working in crazy extreme weather 
or whether um, they have something going on in their life. You know, I'm thinking of a guy right now that I coached. And uh, one time we opened up one of our coaching calls and I said, what was your biggest win of the last week? And he said, I got to toot my own horn. I said, what do you got? He says, I had this employee that just hadn't been getting a lot of sleep. They had a newborn baby and I got three kids, Mm. four kids, whatever he had. He's like, I know what that's like when you're trying Mm. to grind. So he said one of the days in the previous week, he showed up to the job site at like 11 a.m. and said to the guy, uh, how's it going with the baby and stuff? He's like, good, man. You know, it's just trying to get some rest and you know, blah, blah, blah. And he says, well, I'm here to take your place today. So you pay your, I'm going to clock you out at four o'clock, like a normal work day. You go ahead and go home, get some rest, hang with your wife, do what you got to do, recharge yourself. I got your back. You know, just those little things like that. And that really jumped out at me. I was like, Holy that's cow. powerful. Yeah, that, that's powerful. Um, and the story I'm going to tell at mile high on that talk, I was mentioning a minute ago starts with me sharing something that had happened in our company that had been going on for a year. That was a real traumatic thing in one of our employees lives. And I didn't even know it. That's yeah. how out of touch I was, you know, and I'm, re- I'm going to own my crap in front of everybody. And uh, <laughs> day one, I tell an even more embarrassing story <laughs> for, with another issue of how I dropped the ball. Fighters, one of the quickest ways that we can get this show into the ears of more contractors and add value to them and in turn bring respect and dignity back to the trades is ratings and reviews. My ask for you today is simple. Go give us a rating and a review. That's it. Share how this show has helped you. Share how it's added value to you in any way, shape, or form. Do that so that this show reaches more contractors and makes the industry better for everybody. Super appreciate that. You guys rock. Let's do this. Well, dude, that's cool, man. So I want to spend, we should have done this a minute ago, give everyone kind of a fly by 30,000 foot view of what you do. You started your business September 1st, 2018. You found the fight in, I think you said April of 2019. So nine months or whatever that is. I don't even know, nine, eight, nine months into starting your business. So before I ask you any questions about that, give us just an overview of your company. What do you do? How long, okay. and, you know, all that stuff. So people have some context. We have niched down to four things, kitchens, baths, basements, custom decks. By custom decks, we prefer to do composite mm-hmm. uh, decks with, you know, with some nice radius, you know, inlays and, you know, maybe rounded, you know, whatever. That's what we prefer just because we position ourselves as more of a, higher end home renovation firm, Mm -hmm. you know, providing that concierge level service to the clients that we have the privilege of partnering with. So that's, that's our niche. Do we, do we do other things? Yes. As an exception though, rather than there, rather than a rule, there might be a pocket project that we'd like to throw in there if we've got some time in between different things, but typically they're fall into one of those four categories. Okay. Cool. And mm-hmm. how many team members do you have right now? Right now, two in the field, myself, and then we've got our bookkeeper whom you've met, uh, my wife, Sherry. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. All right. So you brought up, you brought up, you kind of zeroed in on some of these services. When did you do that? When did you decide to kind of go, this is our lane? Late 2021, early 2022. Okay. So just this past Less than correct. A year. Okay. Yep. Less so, than a get, year. what was business like prior to that focus, and then compare it to after you kind of dialed it in? Business was whatever you have, we can do, mm-hmm. and so our production looked like whatever leads came in that we could fit into the calendar and and the schedule. Mm-hmm. So, and, and the reason it was that way was because we did not have a, a good handle on our numbers. Yeah. You know, you know, even a year ago, we, we just, we just didn't 24 hours ago, I renewed my one year relationship with a contractor fight. We, mm-hmm. we logged, logged in for another year, uh, paid yeah. for all at one time. Uh, that happened on the 30th, so just yesterday. And we joined the 100K program on August 31st, and we were at Mile High not three weeks later. Wow. So all of that was very fresh and and new. So not knowing our numbers, 
you know, over, over a year ago, just kind of living on, as you say, Hope Island, you know, mm-hmm. drunk on hopium, make, you know, just open to make <laughs> sure that, that we get, we get things taken care of. And then the irony of everything is that while I was at Mile High Profit Summit last year, September of 2021, I sold to date, which was my, my largest, at that time, my largest basement renovation to date. Uh, came in at just under hundred thousand dollars, and the catastrophe was that we started that project in November, the Monday after Thanksgiving last year, and did not finish that project until the end of March of this year. And what I was real excited about, what Dan Sherwood calls getting drunk on zeros, yeah. I got drunk on zeros and thought, man, hundred grand, we we should, man, we should just knock it out of the park. Yeah. That project I've job costed that that we paid hundred and or that they paid a hundred and eight thousand dollars for should have come in at two hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars. Wow. We we lost our shirt. Um it 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 was not good. It was during that season the January, February, and March season of of this calendar year where I didn't realize the secret sauce of the contractor fight. While the coaches are great, and I love me some Tom Reber and Steve Schenholzer, you know, my my Dan and Tim and Greg, I I love all these guys. but, But the ones who really came through for me were the hoi ploy, just the common other contractors yeah. who reached out to me, dug me down in the bottom of the well and said, I'm not going to pull you out of there, but here's my arm to help you climb out. Yeah. Here's, here's how to get out of that mess. Just the, the council. I mean, I, I, I talked to Carolyn Cromings to, f- to figure out what, what do I need to do to make sure that I don't get sued? And, you know, there was such a consortium of, men and women who came to my aid, who basically said, hey, I've been here before. Here's how you're going to get out of this. It's going to be okay. And Tom, Mm -hmm. I didn't want to kill myself. I'll be honest with you. I was not suicidal, but I sure wish I could have stepped out in front of a truck (laughs) and then not died (laughs) there for a while. It was terrible. I didn't sleep for weeks. Where'd you go Uh, wrong on that that one project? Like, okay, now, were you way over budget of the original scope, meaning you just didn't pre-plan the job well and you're inefficient, or did you just price it wrong? Or was it a combination? What do you think? There were a combination of things. I will honestly say everything rises and falls with me. Mm-hmm. So what I'm about to tell you is not blame shifting because I mm-hmm. own it all. Right. I did not have a change order process put in place at the time. And in this 16-week project, there were no less than 73 change orders that happened during the course of this whole thing. How much that revenue, was, how much revenue, if you would have charged for those, would that have been, would have that have brought you to the ones of the two seventy five? No, <laughs> okay. no, that's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. But, but yeah. It, it, it would have added another 75 grand in my pocket. Yeah. Which yeah. I didn't have. So it was, it was a woeful underestimating of how long that project was going to take for us. Mm-hmm. Certain components within that basement renovation with a second floor renovation as well going on at the same time. So there was an underestimation of how long it was going to cost. And then the second component to that, you know, the, the labor cost was the change orders that also added to our time being on the, on the job that we weren't getting weren't getting paid for. It was a mess. And I honestly didn't, there were moments there when I didn't think we were going to make it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that sucks. I've been there, man. You're laying awake at night and your heart's pounding. You're like, Oh my God, what am I going to do? Yeah. (laughs) Sleepless nights for weeks. Yep. All right. I got to ask this question. All right. You got, um, kitchens, baths, basements, custom decks. Right. This is just a self-serving question here. It probably doesn't help anybody, but I, I'm just curious. If you had to only ride one of those horses in your business, what would it be? Well, that's a tough choice. Uh, I would have to say 
bathrooms. And here's why, because there's such a variety in space, in features and levels of bathrooms. Mm-hmm. Like we, if you, if I took you to our website today, you'd see three levels of bathrooms, kind of a basic, a mid-grade and a, and a, and a full-on three-tier uh, yeah. bathroom. And the profit margin's good on, mm-hmm. on those. We do them well. Our, our systems are in place to be able to replicate those well. If gun to my head, I'd have to say we, we really shine on everything, but the bathrooms are, are probably top, yeah. top one for us. Well, well based on your $100,000 project that went south, you're probably not going to agree with this, but if I had to start a remodeling business, I would only do basements and I would only do unfinished basements. And I've had this conversation because I've shared many times on here, like I would personally struggle with being a GC because of all the moving parts, all the different trades. I'm, I'm like, I like having like one lane for many reasons, but I chose basements because you're separated from the rest of the house. You don't disrupt mm-hmm. the family. You know, you can be kind of hide down there if you know what I mean. Yeah. And in an unfinished basement is it's kind of like a new construction environment where everything's under my control. I'm not going to run into that much of like unforeseen conditions and things like that. You know, when you rip the carpet up or you pull the walls down or whatever you have to do. So anyway, I was just curious what, what you yeah, would pick. Absolutely. Own, that makes sense. I, yeah. I think a mutual friend of mine, Craig Solomon, who's just yeah. north, of, north of me, 60 mm-hmm. miles in Kansas City. I think that was a counsel that you gave yeah. to him, I think. And, and yeah, we sat, he was here that. at my house for a coaching day and we sat down here and had that conversation. And that's just my, and I, I how old are you, by the way? <laughs> I'm 50. All right. I'm 53 uh, next week. Yeah. And I, uh, yeah. it, it's funny as I don't think I'm old or anything. We're not old, but as We're I've gotten, as, I, as I've gotten older, I have more of a desire for simplicity in my life. And mm-hmm. lack, and I don't want I don't want to add complications. So that's probably why I would pick the whole you know the basement thing. However, I would have to say kitchens and bathrooms and stuff. There's a lot of emotional connection there, especially with the woman of the house. Mm-hmm. And so I think you can um, you can really differentiate there as well. You know what I'm saying? I mean, of course, there's emotional connection to a finished basement, but like yeah, you know, don't don't screw with the you know, in my house, don't mess with her bathroom and her kitchen, right? Like that's the, they're, they're really sexy parts yeah. of the house. They really are. And, and we like, we like bringing sexy back when it comes right. to doing those things it, that we, we actually do that really well. Cool. So in the home stretch here, what are some things Now you only had nine months or so, eight or nine months or so in business. Then you said you found the fight. Uh, what were some things since you found the fight? That you've been like, man, I'm I'm hanging my hat on this, and it's really moved the needle in a positive direction. Well, you may not know this, so let me okay. let me answer that question this way. I did mention already that I joined Sherry and I joined the Contract to Fight 100K program in August of last year. I essentially sat on the sidelines, what you might call a wallflower, mm-hmm. till about April of this year. Got through the terrible stretch, and I'm so grateful to the men and the women in this community that saved me from pulling the plug on everything. Mm -hmm. After I caught my breath, I realized, you know what, Aaron, what would it be like to go all in, Hmm. to take advantage of everything, to, to get, to get, Serious about. I didn't do my very first role play, Tom, until April seventeenth of this year. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I think today we see that, and we see that a lot, man. I know you see other members and stuff that been in the group for a while, and they never, they never take the plunge and and get into that. And it's funny you bring that up because in your notes, you know, when you answered some questions here, you you refer to yourself as a role play addict. Now, oh, I I've got to get a hit. In fact, kid you not. (laughs) I was in the gym at four o'clock this morning and at five 30, I was doing my first role play with Isaac Oliver mm. at five 30 this morning. So I had to get my hit early today and we've done, we've done two others since then, but it's just, I love the science of it and it, and it's a hub. It, it, it touches everything and I don't understand the magic behind it, but once you commit to the investment of your time, effort, energy, and resources in getting better 
as a person and developing your communicative skills in a way where you can shut up, Mm -hmm. listen, respond, not with what you want to say, but with what they need to hear. Yeah. Things radically change, not just in sales, but in everything. And I don't understand why that is, Tom, but my sales have gotten better. My marketing's gotten better. My passion's gotten better. My focus has gotten better. You know, it, it's amazing that role play, honestly, is the not so secret, secret sauce mm-hmm. that you hear talked about all the time. And nobody believes it until they actually get into it. And yeah. it's like, man, now, now it's like, I'm not just, you know, in it to quote unquote, get this level or that level. To me, it's like, there are a thousand role plays in, in me mm-hmm. and I'm just scratching the surface right now. I'm, yeah. you know, I'm a hundred, I'm 170 in and, mm-hmm. you know, and it's like, man, if it's this great after 170, what's a thousand going to feel like? Yeah. Well, then you're like wait. Bubba, then you're like Bubba and James <laughs> and Derek and those guys. Right. And, yeah. you know, it, it's funny. I've been facilitating the role plays, coaching this stuff for, I think, pretty close to a decade now, probably nine years now, dude, every time, I mean, I run some of our role play calls and stuff and hear some of you guys role play and I critique it and I hear other critiques of some of the other people on the call. I learn something every single time and I get better. And, and that's one of the things that um, a lot of people think I I talked to one guy about sales training. He's like, well, I've had sales training before, Mm. you know, and there's, there's a saying you know, that, uh, training is not something you did. It's something you do. And so if this is our profession, you would think that we would always be training, right? Just like a a sports team trains or a golfer or whatever. So, and the other thing I hear a lot, we just had a Coliseum night the other night, which is a role play night for people that don't know, like it's an a la carte thing. It's only 97 bucks and people can jump on and dip their toe and see what's kind of behind the curtain. There were some people, I don't know if you've ever seen the chat box or anything like that, but people are like, man, I've been doing this on my own for a year. You know, you know, I heard a podcast that you guys talked about the five steps of the Shin Fu or whatever. And then I've been doing it on my own. And then I get in this community and now there's real role play with people who know what the hell they're doing. And I've realized how terrible I am at sales. Like speak to that a little, because if you were a wallflower, you were hearing these things. Sure. And I'm sure you were implementing some of the things that you learned on the surface sure. of, of that. Any movement in the right direction once you started really jumping in and committing to do them all the time? Absolutely. There is a palpable change that one can see in oneself the more that you do it. And part of that comes from the things that you can't see from the outside looking in, a confidence in knowing the numbers that gets communicated through in saying, well, Mrs. Jones, if you'd like to know what others have invested in a bathroom, just like you're talking about, that number is going to be somewhere between 85,000 and Mm 82,000. And just shut up rather than the him hawing around of saying, yeah, well, it could, you know, it could be 85. Is that okay? Yep. I could do, I could do it cheaper than that. You know, if that's too much, uh, you know, so there's a, there's a confidence level that certainly that's there. And, and it was, my listening to Dan Rankin's 500th role play that he did, I think with uh, Derek Johnson, he he made this statement that the shift that I've seen was not overnight. It was, Mm -hmm. it was 180 different choices, one degree at a time. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's a brilliant way to say, great way of putting it. This is not instantaneous. It's an investment of growth. It's just like you seeing your kid that you're with every single day for 18 years. You know they're growing, but it's not until you look back at the pictures to realize, oh my goodness, you've shot up six inches in the last year. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I self-admittedly, I don't do a lot of practice role plays. I facilitate the calls probably twice a week. We, and for those who don't know, inside a battleground every day, every weekday of the month, Monday through Friday, we have a role play call that goes between an hour and 90 minutes and people can jump on and it's a great way to start each day. Right. And so, and we have a bunch of people jump on them and that's about all I ever do. 
just in, in the role play world, right? I just don't do them like I used to because I'm in a different role in our company now. And we role play in the fight for our sales scenarios, just like you guys do. And what I've found is um, I know this stuff. I teach this stuff. I've helped create the curriculum for it. I've helped thousands and thousands of people get better at it and scale, a, you know, A, B, C, D, F. I'm a C. I, I, like I get around all you guys that do this stuff every single day, even, even off those official calls when you know, like you talked to Isaac this morning, right? Like that was separate. Like I just don't have the reps and it's so funny how I can see how quickly my sales skills perish if I'm not practicing. Because what happens to me is I know active listening and, and tactical empathy and all those other things that we talk about. But it, I still find it hard for me to really be in the moment sometimes because mm-hmm. I'm out of practice. And it's just, uh, it, you know, it's, it's one of those things that I'm, that's, that's what I, and you, you alluded to the secret sauce of the group is the group. I mean, dude, I was, yeah. you know, I can't, I mean, you've heard me on those calls before. Somebody will be like, you know, they'll have an objection. And I'm like, I literally go, yeah, guys, I'm at a loss here. Who's got something? What would you do? And the chat bot lights up, lights up chat box or other guys will go unmute me and I'll tap in and I'll do the role play. And I'm like, holy crap, man, you just opened my eyes. So uh, in fact, the other day, it wasn't a role play scenario, but like the power of the group is crazy. Cause I was on the phone with this guy and he had this issue and I'm like, you know, in my mind, I'm like, you know, I could make some shit up. That'll probably help him. Honestly, that's what I thought. I'm like, I could give him some things that that I've heard, right? The exact situation and trade and stuff I had no experience in, but I could have like, I could have meandered through it and we could have pulled some things out of them and, and come up with some solutions. And instead I go, I go, Hey, um, I don't mean to sound like I'm blowing you off here, but this issue that you're dealing with right now, that's a Micah Miller thing, Mm. you know? And I'm like, are you cool? If when we get, we'll just get off the phone and I'll text both of you guys and connect you. I'm like, have you ever talked to Micah? And he's like, no. And I'm like, dude, let's get you on the phone with Micah. And I sent a text out like two minutes after we got off the phone, I shot this text. I go, you know, Micah and -and so-and-so meet each other because they hadn't met, you know, this guy never had never talked to him. And I said, Micah, so-and-so has got some things that I think are in your wheelhouse. Dude, within 30 seconds, Micah replies and goes, Hey, you know, I, I got time right now. We can talk or, you know, we could schedule something later today. I'm Mm. here for you, man. Let me know what you need. That's our group right there. To yeah, me, that's, that's 100%. the group. Like, yeah, we have amazing coaches and, and I, you know, we, we've walked the walk and the talk or whatever the saying is and all that other stuff. But what I love about the group is the group and the more people get involved, what you see is that people want to help each other. And that is so different than many of the groups I've seen and been a part of personally in yeah. the past. So, I, I, I couldn't agree more. I've never had anybody, you know, come up to me. In, in a metaphorical sense, pounding their chest saying, look how great I am. Look how big my mm-hmm. company is. But yet there are guys in this group that, you know, there are multi-million dollar companies, mm-hmm. but there's a genuine sense of a collective that when you get better, everybody gets better. Mm-hmm. When you're improving yourself, I, I get better because I know you and I want to help you come to that next level because it rises every, every ship in, in this lake that we're in together. Totally. I was in the ministry. I yeah. know what it's like to go to pastors conferences. And I got to tell you right now, <laughs> I wouldn't give you a flip of a plug nickel for any of those that I ever went to, but I'll take everybody in, in the contractor fight because it it's what it probably, you would have thought that should have been. This, this is more of a genuine, authentic community made up of an eclectic mix of people Mm-hmm. Like you wouldn't believe, but we're all pulling the same rope. And I've got friends that I think I would cut off a digit for that I've never met <laughs> in person Yep, because, because of this group. And I'm unapologetic about it. I've told some guys that, that I've met in the last several months that be careful because when we see each other at Mile High Profit Summit, you know, bro hug coming. I just instantaneously, <laughs> you're going to get ambushed. So just yep. know that if the little bald guy comes up, it it's probably Aaron hugging me, you know, there you go. and be okay with that. Just be well, okay I was, with that. I always tell people our events are like a reunion. Like, yeah. You know, like everyone gets together. It's like an old, 
high school reunion, sports team, military unit, whatever it is. It's literally, I have some very, very close friendships here in Colorado Springs, but I can easily say that some of my best friends in the world are part of the fight and they're in different places and we maybe see each other once or twice a year in person. If that, that makes, that makes sense to me. That makes mm-hmm. total sense to me. Yep. So dude, to wrap this up, you get the floor now, man, it's yours. A couple minutes here, you know, up to a couple minutes. What do you want to share with hundreds of thousands of contractors right now? Like what's, what's on your, your heart that might be of value to somebody listening to this? I realize number one, that we're all unique. God's made us all unique and, and, and we're different. We're gifted in different ways, but that doesn't mean that you're special in this sense that if you're going to be successful, you've still got to put in the work. You've still got Mm -hmm. to make the effort. It's not just going to come automatically. So you're not so special that you don't have to, you don't have to do the work. I think for me, when it comes to knowing what it is to be a business owner that wants to have a legacy that lives long past me, it's just that I feel like I'm learning that I've got the power to make people feel important or make people feel like an idiot when I'm talking to them Mm. on the phone. And given a choice, I'll take the former over the latter any day. Yeah. I I love the ability to, regardless of what their need is, when they hang up the phone, whether we're their partner or not in a project, do they feel important or do they feel like a stupid you know, person for asking some questions. I want to make them feel important regardless of what it is. And that, that to me is a successful phone call. Like to make a sale, but you know, invest in yourself so that you can be better for those people in your life. When you understand that investing yourself is not selfish, but but rather an important part of becoming who you need to be for those other people in your life. Um, Yeah, man, I, I wake up every day going at some point, first thing in the morning, at some point, the thought crosses my brain that I got a shit ton of people relying on me to do my job today at the highest level possible. And that's just how I'm wired. That's how I'm wired. Right. Like I, and I thrive on that. I want to be the guy at the free throw line and has to make the shot. Like that's just my, you know, I was never a basketball <laughs> player. You know, I thrive under that pressure. And quite honestly, a lot of people are like, I don't know how to be more disciplined and all this other stuff. And I'm like, guys, sometimes it ain't about you, you know, and that's okay. Whatever gets me to do the things that I need to do and implement the things I need to implement and get my head out of my ass and whatever. Sometimes it's totally okay if my motivation is I just need to do it for my team. I need to do it for my family. I need, you know, and, uh, and I'm not saying blow, we talk a lot about take, getting oxygen and taking care of ourselves, but sometimes on those days, it's like, my feelings don't matter today. I got people dependent on me and, um, yeah, I don't know, man, it's, um, I like the pressure, but so as we get out of here, I want you to share sure. with people where they can find you, where, where you at, tell them that. And, you know, if somebody wants to uh, partner with you on a project, maybe somebody wants to come work for you. Maybe somebody's looking to shut their business down in one area and they're going to move to your area and they need to know who you are. How do, how do we find you? Where are you at? All that good stuff. Super easy. We're located in Northeastern Kansas, a little town called Ottawa. Probably haven't heard of that, but you might've heard of this thing called the interwebs. So yep. you could go online and, and type in hhrenovators.com. That stands for Harshaw. Home Renovators. Go to hhrenovators.com, check us out. And if there's anything that is of interest to you, click that little button in the top right hand corner and we'll have a conversation. That's awesome, man. Mm. Well, dude, I appreciate you carving out the time to do this. And uh, I'm so grateful just for the example you set for others of how to be a giver. You know, I can't wait to see where you're at in the next couple of years, man, because I know you're going to keep lighting it on fire and 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 I, I believe this mostly because of the way you show up and lead your team and you care for your team. And, and, you know, at Profit Summit last year, I talked about the profit path and it literally starts with leadership, the culture that you intentionally build. And the next step is employee satisfaction, which doesn't mean you're responsible for people's happiness, but they're satisfied. They feel significant. They feel cared about. They, 
you know, and then everything else, quality of work and loyalty and profit, all that follows those three first pillars of leadership culture and really giving your heart to your employees. So I have no doubt you're going to continue to, you know, crush it despite whatever obstacles and adversity come your way, man. So I'm excited to watch your journey. Well, thanks, Tom. I've appreciated the time today. And, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm definitely not afraid of failure. I've, I've had my, mm-hmm. my fair share of it, um, but it doesn't scare me. And yeah. I, I know what it's like to come on the other side. And I, I'm looking forward to seeing what it looks like a year from now, too. So we'll, uh-huh. we'll, we'll, we'll experience that together. Good stuff, thanks man. Again. I appreciate you. All right, everybody, check out Aaron's stuff in the show notes. Give us a rating review. Share this with another contractor that you know that needs to hear it. Um, cause the more we get this stuff out into the contract world, uh, rises the, what's the, what's the thing, Aaron it rises the tide and yeah, the a rising and, tide yeah. raises all ships. There you go. That's what we're after here. So appreciate you guys. Have a great day. We're out.